What is up, my tubers? Welcome back to another draft here on Arena. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out cardkingdom.com slash newmont for all your magic card needs. We are still on our way to 100k subs, so thanks all of you for subscribing if you haven't already. And for those that haven't subscribed, I hope maybe this draft will entice you to do so. We'll find out. We've got some more murders at Karlov Manor ahead of us. And we've opened a couple of pretty nice white rares here. First being, assemble the players. You can look at the top card of your library anytime, and once each turn you may cast a creature spell with power two or less from the top of your library. Card is actually quite powerful. Uh, you have to remember that you can also cast, that's right, disguise creatures from the top of your library uh, because they do have an alternate power of two. Unyielding Gatekeeper, the other good white rare here. I'm not going to have much time to go over it. Uh, Fey Flight... We are going to take the Assemble the Players, and let's see if we can draft a nice white deck. Follow-up pick is going to be Among Us or the Night Watch. Killer Among Us, I'm pretty surprised at how good this card has been. It's five mana for three 1-1s, one and then, um, of course, you can choose one of those 1-1s one and make it a 4-4 four -four attacker on a given turn. It's actually been really, really impressive. It maybe not doesn't, you know, doesn't look as good as uh, it plays out at first, but I think it's really nice. So we'll take that for our second pick. I actually had a funny agency outfitter deck earlier today on stream where we both got the uh, cap and the glass, and it was actually pretty good. Decent start, decent start. And again, another really, really nice uncommon to follow up a killer among us. This is Perimeter Enforcer. Again, maybe it doesn't look all, like all that much, but these type of creatures... Flying lifelink creatures, small flying lifelink creatures and limited have always been pretty good. The thing is, there are a ton of detectives in the format. Uh, it's easy to pump this up. And uh, combat tricks and uh, even auras are even better in this format, I think. But yeah, perimeter enforcer, top tier uncommon. We're not passing too much. Dog walker's good, panther's good. Especially after Assemble the Players, Perimeter is nice. Oh, Leon and Relic Warders in this form. This is another one of those list cards that I have yet to see. Um, it's not bad. Even if you're just eating a clue, that's a good value. But there is, once again, some really, really nice choices for us. If I wanted to stick with white, we would take the Dog Walker. But the Exit Specialist is, again, one of the better uncommons in the format. So that's going to be an easy choice for me. Yeah, Specialist, and then otherwise we have Walker, Relic Warder, and Inspector. Great pickup so far. The good pickups continue. Case of the Filched Falcon is kind of strong. You need to have a decent number of ways to produce artifacts, though, to really want that. Um, I could take it now and see. But that being said, we have two really good green, excuse me, green cards. We have a second killer among us and a nervous gardener here. Uh, I guess I just double up on killer among us. I don't love taking five drops, but this is a five drop worth taking. That is really strange. Lost in the maze is fantastic, I'm pretty sure, right? Two mana enchantment with flash. When it enters the battlefield, tap X creatures, put a stun counter on each of those creatures you don't control, and then tapped creatures you control have hexproof, so... You can actually use this as a trick to tap your own creature if uh, you want to give it hexproof to deny like a removal spell from your opponent, but usually you're tempoing out the opponent and just getting in there. I think No More Lies is pretty good. Haunch is fine. Okay, we are open to a different, couple different plans here. Strange, yeah, we have two very good cards in each of the Bant colors. <laughs> Leyline of the Guild Pact. We will not be playing that one. Let's see. Eavesdropper is a good green common. Vigilante is actually a fine top end card for the white decks. Both of the blue cards are pretty medium. Yeah, I think the eavesdropper is the best card there, so let's take that. Okay. Projector Inspector is good. Burden of Proof is decent. 
This is like a removal spell slash pump effect. I actually guess I, I want to take the burden of proof instead of the inspector. Leaning a bunch of different ways. Let's see, a bubble smuggler here or an on the job. The two Gazi inspectors also okay. I mean, we haven't seen much white. So I guess I'm going to take the smuggler here instead. Accusation over smuggler for a little bit of removal. I don't know why. I haven't been really impressed by sudden setback, but I don't think it's a bad card. The fact that I can hit spells and permanents, I think, makes it a reasonable um, card. Make your moves good in this format, too. Lots of good targets there. Okay. Let's see what pack two gives us. Two good red-blue cards. Kylox's Volt Strider is really, really cool. It's a 4-4 vehicle for three with a crew two, but you can collect evidence six to also crew it. And then whenever it attacks, you can exile an instant or sorcery from among the cards exiled, um, and you can cast it. Yeah, so remember, you have to pay the mana for it still, but it's a lot of value. But good thing is we do have a nice white pickup here, one of the better white uncommons, similar with the perimeter force, so that's the Neighborhood Guardian. Comes down on turn two, pushes a lot of pressure. Given we're so heavy blue right now, I could see taking the Volt Strider if you really wanted, but I think the Guardian's a good pickup. I'm going to lean towards the blue-white here for now. Gross. Uh, I mean, we're not going to take the Buzz Crusher at this point. I can either take the Smuggler or the C Crowd Control Warden, which is okay for the blue-white decks. Or I could stay open to green still and take the Evidence Examiner, since we do have those green cards we took. I guess because we don't have that many white cards yet, it's still okay to take the Evidence and maybe still consider the green. World Soul's Rage is fine. But this is a Market Watch Phantom for sure. I want to, if we are drafting uh, white, maximize our Assemble the Players. And right now we actually have a pretty good Assemble deck. All of our five creatures, once I take this Phantom, can be cast off the top. Prof's Eidetic Memory. ETB draw a card, you have no maximum hand size. Beginning of combat on your turn, if you've drawn more than one card this turn, put X1-1 one, one counters on target creature you control. Where X is the number of cards you've drawn this turn, minus one. So if you've drawn an extra card on your turn, it's a plus one, plus one counter. Because you draw one for the turn, and then you, yeah, so if you, like, sack a clue, you would put a 1-1 one, one counter on something. That's not bad. I think I'd rather just take the sprite here or the cold case cracker. But that card looks totally reasonable. Not on my watch versus a lush portico, which could enable some green splashing if we wanted to. I think a lot of our creatures are going to be evasive, though. So a lot of times I don't like this type of card uh, when you're going to be a more aggressive deck. But in a deck that's just kind of all evasion, I think it's worthwhile. Eliminate the impossible is a good trick. If not, tracker is a solid four drop. I guess I do need more creatures right now, so I'm going to take the tracker. Reasonable doubt is totally reasonable. I will take the on the job, but I'm not quite sure I'm going to play that. This is a decent start. We just need more creatures. Right now I have one, two, three, two drops, one, two, three, three drops, and a four drop, and everything but the tracker can be cast off the top with Assemble the Players. Ideally, we want to get like 10 cards for Assemble, I think. We're at six right now. Yeah, we basically have all the interaction we really need. We just need the creatures to round it out. I think. Holy smokes. 
Uh, I mean, I guess it's too late now, but that was kind of interesting. Target equipment. Don't think the shuffler's any good. Man, I guess I should have moved into red, huh? It would have been really weird to take a red card, though, to begin pack two, although we would have gotten rewarded with the, what, Buzz Strider? Although, what else? We haven't seen any shocks or anything, so... This is really messy. <laughs> we even opened the red-blue Wrath. That's so sick. God, I almost want to start taking red cards, but we just don't have enough playables. One, two, three, four. No, we don't have enough. I'm going to have to take Dog Walker here or Cold Case Cracker. I guess the Cracker is a little bit better than the Dog Walker in this deck. Cranko. Thankfully, we have Inside Source. Holy smokes. Man, the red is just flowing in both directions and we're getting punished. And it's too late to pivot. Good beats. It is what it is. We'll definitely make do with what we're drafting. It's just maybe not as good as it could have been. It's nice. Nightwatch here over Inspector, I think. You have six detectives, though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight creatures now for the uh, assemble the players. Make that nine with forum familiar, which has some okay value in our deck. A third, notably a killer among us. Yeah, if I could get a couple more two drops and then maybe like one out cold, I think this deck will do really well. Uh, I did hit Mythic earlier today on stream, so we will be playing against, or uh, rather we will be trying to improve our ranking into a high enough position to start playing best of three. Because I think once I find a good, uh, if and when rather, I hit a good Mythic ranking, uh, I will probably sit on that for the rest of the season and uh, try to... Um, just play best of three. Okay, good pack. Lots of playable choices here. I like Researcher, although I don't know if it's as good in this deck. There's that out cold I was hoping for. The Crocodile's a fine disguise creature. Arrival and Sanctuary Wall both okay as well. Nice. Oh yeah, this is one of the cards we were really looking for. Been super happy with Granite Witness. This card tends to do a lot of work. We have another stopper here, but I think I want to get Witness number one. Another dead pack for us. We're not playing this, right? Yeah. Creature count up to 12. Three more creatures would be really nice. Another uh, Market Watch Phantom. Or even like Sanitarium, whatever it's called. The 2-1 artifact creature for two. Oh. That's, well, we did get it, but actually Technician and Surveillance Monitor are pretty good. We're wheeling the ill-timed explosion, that's funny. Another Tracker versus Vigilante, let's take the Vig here. Damn, now I wish I'd taken the other flyer. All right, I mean, we got there on playables. Would have loved to have another two drop, but overall, I think our deck is solid. Nothing else I want to be playing here. I, again, I don't think I want on the job. Morph, morph, morph. Morph, morph, or disguise, whatever you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, solid blue-white detectives. Though I don't have that much of a detective theme. This is just a good curve. Solid deck. 
I expect us to do reasonably well. Reasonably. Within reason. Okay, round one, Phyto. Playing out a one mana 1-1 one, one does not seem like where we want to be, but what am I doing otherwise? I'm on the play as well. I actually think this is worthwhile. It looks really weird, but I think it's correct. I even think playing out the exit specialist on turn two is correct with his hand. Nice, and our opponent, yeah, is on a slower hand, so we are going to really punish. <laughs> If I was on the draw, I would not have made this play. I guess I should have just left the Granite Witness with Vigilance. I could also have not attacked with my Specialist since we have Out Cold in our hand. Kill that with make your move if we want to. But I think we just want to play out our watch. Would be nice to hit a land here so I could flip up the night watch and hold up doubt. Leaving up double blue. They could have a lost in the maze themselves. Alright, let's flip our watch, get a 2-2, two, two, and hold up doubt. I'm not countering that. I made a mistake by attacking with the exit specialist since I had out cold in my hand. I'm pretty sure. Oh, it held up double blue for dramatic. That's what it was. They didn't have... Okay, never mind. This is a crime stopper. It is. We are going to suspect our... One, one here. Could also suspect they're an inspector to make it unable to block. But I think trading for their inspector is okay. Again, a little bit awkward to making all these trades when I have out cold. I would not be surprised if this game was actually just played very poorly. Exit Specialist, okay. Oh, uh, that was the card we were really hoping they didn't have. Red source now, too. <sighs> Ill-timed explosion. Alright, if they discard a three-mana spell, they can kill everything but their Ezrum. They did...
I don't really care if they sacrifice a clue to protect that. Locking it down for a turn. Actually, we have a lot of ways to potentially lock it down. Nice, that's one of their ways to protect it gone. Double red. Museum Night Watch, that's fine. <laughs> okay, so now we can go like this. Lost in the Maze for two. Targeting both their creatures. They sacrifice the clue in response to protect Ezrum, and then I make your move in response to the clue sacrifice. is also going to still tap down their night watch good not very often you beat an Ezrum but looks like we might be able to do it here nice Whew. we had just enough tricks to keep it at bay don't you ask me if I had fun we already know the answer to that. One zo. One and oh. Let's go to game two. This is a keepable hand on the draw. Because it really just needs a third land to be able to do some stuff. A draw. Need to find third land still, but good draw. Excellent. Uh, since we're on the draw, oh, I was going to say, since we're on the draw, I will make a trade here, if offered. They're missing their land drops. Okay. Is that Vigilance? Why did I think that had Vigilance? Eh, we missed a land drop now. Nice aggro hit from the opponents. We get to trade here, make another 2-2 though, which will block another red herring later. This is awkward because all of my creatures trade with their red herring. Like, I don't have a great play this turn. I guess I'll just lost in the maze. I wonder if they just sack one if they missed a land drop. Oh, no, they didn't. Yeah, gosh, really need another land. Okay, they're going to sack their knife to draw a card. And they bricked it. They're just getting very unlucky. So we can turn the corner now and pressure them. <laughs> Did 
they finally found their third land. Yeah. I mean, you can imagine if had they hit their lands, they would have probably crushed us. But you take what you can get, and sometimes variance is a cruel mistress. Playing against Humph? Is this Daddy Cheon? Is this Mr. Paul himself? My hand's not great versus, well, rather, my opening hand's not great. You don't know what versus, of course. Um, yeah, let's get the assemble online. Turn two tunnel tipster. That is not good. Turn two tunnel tipster has to have an extremely high win rate in this format. Start ramping out all the insanos. Oh god, the double t tipster. We're bricking on our... Bricking on our assemble the players top. It's like a turn four panther here or something. Okay, well, that's irrelevant. Oh, the case! That's really bad, because now all of his creatures are going to get bigger. Yeah, that's an insane draw. Are you freaking kidding? It auto-tapped like that? Oh my god. We got auto-tapped because it thinks I wanted to cast Lost in a Maze here instead of letting me flip my face-down creature. That's so bad. It also means I didn't get to cast the perimeter. <sighs> wow, that is... We're going to lose because of that, it feels like. That's frustrating. Okay, well, we can lost in the maze here, for good value at least. We would have been in a much better position though. Still bricking on top of our library as well. Mm. If we could just hit like one more creature off the top of our Library with Assemble next turn, we might be okay. Sure. Another land? Are you kidding? Well. We flooded out and we got auto-tapped. Disgusting.
Yeah, if on that one turn we were able to cast the Perimeter Enforcer or flip our Night Watch, we would have been very far ahead, I think. Because we would have traded with one of those creatures earlier, or we would have drawn an extra card in essence. Okay, well, we lost to Daddy Humph, and that is always a terrible feeling. We can blame the auto-tapper on that one. We would have drawn the removal spell that turn if we had been able to play the perimeter off the top. We would have also gained a lot more life earlier. Oh my god. That sucks. Okay, good beats. Need to be a little bit more wary with uh, letting the auto-tapper get me like that. That's so sick. I had three planes, two islands, and the, the Night Watch on top. It taps all three planes because it, I can cast the Lost in the Maze for double blue, even though I can't pay any X. <laughs> uh. Hands good. This is turn two, Guardian, turn three, Smuggler, face down, attack for three. From there, nice specialist, also really freaking good. Reasonable Doubt was another good draw, but I think we do want to just go for this play. Let's see if they have the 3 damage or kill an attacker here or something. Nothing! Hmm. The Phoenix. This is a really nice turn where we get to bounce the Phoenix, attack for 4, and then hold up the Reasonable Doubt. Plane the two drop. I think we're just attacking for three here. We are going to suspect our bubble smug. Because the exit specialist, we probably want to bounce back with our forum familiar. It's fine. Pressure's on. Kaya, okay. I heard you had some dead things that needed to stay. If I hit a land there, I would have had lethal. On the spirits, if you know what I mean. Let's see. Can't quite kill them this turn. Yep. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure I need to attack all that Kaya. It's too bad. Shuffling me off my mortal coil. I don't think I miss lethal. This can't be blocked by big creatures. I could only lost in the maze their token and hit him down to one. Yeah, land would have won, but. I mean, unless they have a wrath, we're still looking fantastic, of course. There's the land. So remember, this has ward two, so I can't lost it. I think we're going to attack with all still. See how they play it. Sure, that's fine. Okay, still looking good here. It just pumps their creatures. All right, so. Uh, we just go one, two, three, tap. Say GG's. That'll do just fine. They almost stabilized. But not quite good enough. Okay, three and one. And the loss was kind of from Auto Tapper. I'm blaming it. <laughs> Let's go next. Uh, this hand's okay. We don't need to find a white source ASAP. Although, if we do, that's of course just gravy. Alright, the leech. I take three, they mill two. Build a remove two removal spells. Ah, reasonable that was a fantastic draw. Now I can just hold that up instead of wanting to cast out my specialist. Because presumably they're not going to pump this turn, and if they do, that's crazy. Perfect. They milled two, they've milled four removal spells with the leech. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and suspect their leech so it can't block. What was that? A Basilica Stalker. Okay. <laughs> the leech has milled four removal spells. Boo. They get to slice my morph. Man, they have infinite removal in their deck. Crazy. Both players are getting stuck on three. Nope, not anymore. Leech is very good. Leech dot deck, huh?
you stop killing my stuff, please? Holy crap. One, two, three, four, five, six removal spells already? It's kind of insanity. I think I need to try to hit a land drop here. Gross. <sighs> the funny thing is, had I had removal for their creatures, they couldn't win. All they had was removal themselves. Sprite was a good draw. Um, I'm going to lock down the leech and I guess play out my 1-1. One, one. Okay, this is actually hilarious. I go to one here. Their deck is incredibly removal dense. My god. I'm just going to die to a shock, most likely, is my guess. Okay. Actually insane. Actually insane. We're just dead. Another slice and shadow? Is that what this is? Oh my god. What on earth? We lost to three teeny cre- if, Again, if I have one removal spell, like hard removal spell there, I don't think they can win, but let me tell you, they had infinite removal. They just had didn't have many win cons, and there was nothing I could do about it. <laughs> Those are the frustrating games. Yeah, like just one makeshift binding, I cannot lose. Jeez Louise, good beats. Yeah, good draw. Good draw. Ah, some silly games here. Okay, we have Assemble the Players again. This will not be a hand where we run out the turn one forum familiar. Good old Novice Inspector. Alright, let's start drawing extra cards, ideally. Opponent's got a good draw. I 
will say it feels pretty bad knowing when you just draw a bunch of lands or when you're going to draw a bunch of lands. All right, I like seeing that. Oh my lord, dude. <sighs> Whoa. There's no way they double block, right? Uh, I'm a little bit tempted to just go like this. Oh, that's a soldier. Never mind. Almost punted. This is a detective, though. Okay, I see. Call a surprise witness it back. Let's go ahead and suit it up, make it a 4 4. Dude. We have seen nothing but lands on top. Come on. Uh, I mean, if they go for like a removal spell on my 4-4, I can bounce the burden of proof with the cat. Probably need to save the removal for their in perimeter enforcer now. <laughs> of course, the first creature we do see on top is one that I cannot cast with assemble. I mean, I can't really complain. I, we're getting another mana screwed opponent. But these wins and losses have felt pretty bad, let me tell you. Yeah, there's their second color. Okay. I assume they're going to be making a game out of this. Good. We get to save our cat, or our uh, cold case cracker here. I have not drawn a single card with Assemble the Players this game. We have hit... Nothing but our top end and land. <sighs> oh my gosh. Well, the good news is I get to draw a card here. And they have to be careful since they're at four. They have to leave something back to block our, yeah, our uh, four, four. Dude, are you kidding? This is so unbelievably frustrating. <laughs> We kill their face down card here instead of their sentry because they don't have any other stuff going on. Okay. Again! <sighs> I 
I'm kind of shook, not gonna lie. Hopefully they just try to play another fat creature and we kill them then with- If they play another t uh, panther, for example, then we win. Or something else that costs like six. Remember, I can make one of their creatures unable to block as well. Okay, I'm gonna take eight. I think I'm supposed to not cast doubt this turn. Because they have two more cards in their hand. Yeah, let's double block the three five. even if they have plus three, plus three, this is fine. Oh, did they mess up? Nice. Oof. Well, they're just dead to anything here. We still never hit a single card off of some of the players. We hit every single expensive card in our deck and land. Like, I have to imagine the odds of that are so freaking low. How many creatures were left in our deck that we could cast off the top? Ooh, okay, breathe, Kenji. Everything's fine. You're at four wins. You're doing well. It's fine. Everything's fine here. <sighs> Once we get out of these dirty best of one gutters and go to best of three, I'm sure I will have a better time. I say that with every format these days because it's not that every set um, recently has gotten progressively faster, though they all have been incredibly fast. It's just that best of one really, really skews it in favor of the fast decks, it seems, the curve outs, the who's on the play versus who on the draw, you know? I mean, the thing is, you can still have, in best of three games, or matches, rather, where you're on the draw multiple times, but... I think the uh, hand-smoother curve-out is a lot less troublesome. This is why they have best of one as the only ranked version. For limited, anyways. They want people to throw away their money. Love person of interest in the aggro decks. I'm going to make our 2-2 two, two, a 3-3 three, three this turn. That way we have two good blockers. The drone smith. Okay. That's fine. We'll take one in the air. So they have an okay double block on my Vigilante with a 2-3 and a 2-2, two, two, but... Whoa. Whoa, that is a weird block. Okay. I'll kill the Dronesmith and the Bystander and keep their disguise. Okay, that's fine. All right, deck. It's a good draw. Thank you. Specialists should get them pretty. What? They're. 
Freaking triple blocking again. Okay. Let's kill the second more first. What is going on? What? How do you block with your own exit specialist there? That's crazy. I'm shook. I am actively shook right now. Well, I didn't expect them to not do anything with this morph card here, but... Sure. Yeah, they get to investigate things or whatever. That was a good turn for them. Oh, they're going to make that a 4-4 and then we can kill it. Uh, actually, or I could just... Yeah, it's better to flip and time walk them. We'll find another make your move target later. Might even just be the orangutan again, right? They might sack their clue. Good. Annoying, but not bad. All right, I will take the two. Trading off for both their creatures here is fine by me. <laughs> okay, we're looking good. We have lethal presented on board. They have two cards in their hand. Sure. Just go to combat here and see what they do. Maybe they have a technician of their own here. I'm just going to pass priority and see what happens. Because right now, this is a good trade for us. Nice. All right, and that's GG. The bubble smuggler claims a victim. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Feels good, man. Feels freaking good. Five wins, two losses. Playing against NCAA, who's on number one. Oh my gosh, he's been grinding. Our hand's quite good if we can find a third land here. Our hand is quite good if I can find a third land here. <laughs> Damn it. Sliced and diced. I'm going to lead with the smuggler first. Side source, double surveil. Goodbye, Smuggy. Mm. 
Not good. We need to find some lands. Oh my lord. Well, that's gross. The double whisk drinker is, uh... Kind of disgusting. <laughs> we can't find lands, dude! Okay, drain for one. Oh my god, okay. So I'm gonna go for the burden of proof on one of those uh, wisp drinkers, because tapping it down is not good enough. The trigger still happens. Oh, it doesn't even lose flying, it just becomes a 1-1. One, one. Now we're dead. I think even if we hit our land drops, we were not winning that game. That was a disgusting curve out. Okay, well, 5-3 and three is not a terrible result, but those losses were kind of embarrassing. We lost to Auto Tapper to Daddy Humph. We lost to Mono Removal, two creatures, and then we lost to whatever that uh, black-white curve out there was the end. Our deck was good, though. I mean, the thing is, a couple of my wins, at least, were my opponents just getting stuck on lands, too, you know? Like, I think we drafted fine. We could have ended up with a much better deck, but we drafted fine. The games were not that exciting. Um, I expect to move into best of three in the next day or two, so... Let's take a crack at best of three and see if we can uh, solve the format that way because I think best of one for me is kind of uh, already hit its hit its max peak. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you back next time. Bye-bye.